How about that? Let's go to um, Matthew. Praise God, chapter 28. I want to read uh, verses 19 and 20 in your hearing. Praise God. Matthew 28. Verses 19 and 20. Amen. Are you there? And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. I'm going to read that again just for marination purposes. Amen. And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. The word of God for the people of God. Praise be to our God. You may be seated in the presence of our God. Amen. These two verses comprise what we know of as the Great Commission. Praise God. These are some of the last words that Jesus spoke before he went to sit at the right hand of his father. Praise God. Outside of the walls of True Light Christian is a lost and desperate world. Those that are unsaved are looking for right answers in all the wrong places. If there is no light, then there's going to be darkness, evil, and devastation in our world. But God has placed in every believer light. Praise God. We sing the song, this light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Everywhere I go, I'm going to let it shine. My God gave it to me, and I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Somebody needs to see some light. And if people never see light, they will dwell in darkness, and the only thing they have to look forward to is darkness, distress, the grave, and hell fire. Next Sunday is Family and Friends Day here at True Light. Amen. It would be a shame for us to just come, the same people, without inviting anybody else. Praise God. Part of our responsibility is to go out and to bring people to True Light Christians. Amen. To share the good news of God to other people. I love to eat. Praise God. And I love good food. But I don't just like good food for myself. I like to share it with somebody else. Amen. The fellowship 
of dining with people of like mind, there's a beauty in fellowship, even as you are enjoying the thing that you love. And so if you have something worth having, you want to share it with somebody else. Your task this week ought to be to gather up as many people as you possibly can and invite them to be here to next week for Family and Friends Day so that we can celebrate together the goodness of our God. Amen? A great thinker has left on record that the gospel is not something we come to church to hear. It is something we go from worship to tell. I'm going to repeat that because you might want to write that down. A great thinker has left on record that the gospel is not something we come to church to hear. It is something we go from worship to tell. Somebody needs to hear that there is a reality in serving a true and a living God. Amen? One of the most crucial statements Jesus ever made was, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. It didn't look like that when Jesus was crucified, did it? When Jesus was crucified, it looked like the end. After all, he was stretched out between two thieves. I tell people that Friday didn't become good until Sunday. Amen. But when Jesus got up from the grave, he turned bad Friday into good Friday. Praise God. Sunday meant that death, hell, and the grave did not have power over Jesus. And so he was victorious over the last enemy that you and I got to face. So he was able to get up and say, all power, not some power, but all power and all authority has been given to me. And so I just thought I would tell you, some of the power and authority that Jesus had. Is that all right? Jesus has power and authority to forgive sins. Find that in Luke 5, 20 and 7, 48. Aren't you glad that Jesus forgives sins? I'm glad. Praise God, because I've forgotten most of the sins I've ever committed. We have a tendency, if we're not careful, to think that we have been good for a long time. But the fact of the matter is that if God had not come and done something for us, we would still be dead in our sins. But Jesus has power and authority over sin. He has so much authority over sin until he can wash you whiter than snow. He can wipe your slate clean in one moment. Praise God. In that, he's greater than tithe. Well, Jesus gets the stains out that others leave behind. Amen? Jesus has authority to mediate to the Father. What Jesus did on the cross is he, he took away the middle partition. Many of you all know that when he died on the cross, the veil of the temple was rent from top to bottom, which meant that God gave us access to the throne room of God. Jesus mediated between God and man. And right now, according to 1 Timothy 2.5, he is mediating for us on our behalf before the Father. I'm glad about that because the devil is still making accusation against me and against you. And he ain't wrong some of the time. Amen? You know, a broken clock is right twice a day. And sometimes when he tells God to own us, he's telling the truth. But aren't you glad that Jesus is there interceding on our behalf? 
that when the devil tells God something about us, Jesus says, yes, but I died for them. And I have washed their sins away. I have paid the price. And he didn't pay the price for just some things. Oh, my goodness. He paid it all. My past is redeemed. My present makes sense and my future is secure. In other words, I'm not holding my breath wondering where I'm going. Heaven is my home. I'm just traveling down through here. Amen. One of these days I'm going to make it home. Because whether you know it or not, there's no place like home. Jesus has power and authority to send the Holy Spirit. John 14, 26 and 15, 26. Jesus told the disciples, he said, you will receive power. After that, the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you will be witnesses of me in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and into the uttermost parts of the world. Jesus did not leave you and I comfortless. Praise God. But he gave us an indwelling power that will be with us even until the end of the age. Now let me tell you why that's important. When Jesus was here, he could only be with the disciples. And as long as Jesus was around, when they got in trouble, guess what? Jesus could handle it. Amen. Their problem was that Jesus told them, I'm going to leave y'all. And they said, well, if you're going to leave, where are we going? Because we've given up everything. We left our vocations. We left our families. We have left all to follow you. And so Jesus said, I'm going away, but I'm not going to leave you comfortless. And I'm going to send you another comforter who will not be with you he will be in you. How many of y'all saved from here? If you're saved, that means that you have the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit. There is never a time or a place where God is not present with you. And that ought to give you great consolation that nothing that anybody says or does to me is going to be able to defeat me because greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I'm not alone. Hallelujah. I have power. And I don't have power to run. I got power to stay and to stand. Amen. Because God don't need coward soldiers. God needs somebody to having done all to stand. And the Holy Spirit will give you the power to withstand whatever you got to go through. Amen? Stop cussing out your co-workers. They're not your problem. Amen? Stop, stop worrying about people because people are not your problem. The system is not your problem. Amen? Nothing can defeat you because God is in you and all authority and power is already in his hand. So if you know what I know, you, you are a tremendously gifted individual. And you know what God will do? God will allow gifts to manifest at the appropriate time. You see, a lot of people going around talking about what they have. They really don't know what they have, and they, and they can't just make things happen by themselves. God is in control, not people. And when you have the Holy Spirit within you, all of the gifts are there. Amen. And God will allow a gift to manifest when it's appropriate. Amen. You know, I've seen... Uh, Watermelons in, in, the, uh, in the supermarket. I haven't bought any. You know why? 
it ain't the season. Amen. And you can buy fruit and it looks good. It looks like it's supposed to be good. And then you cut it open and it is bland. But I double dog dare you to get a fruit in its season. When you, when you bite into it, it, just a smile will just overtake your face. And all you can say, you can't even say, you just say, mm, mm, mm. You ever tasted anything, you just shook your head and say, mm, mm, mm. Well, that's how God does us as it relates to his gifts. God will allow gifts to come forward at the appropriate time. Amen. In other words, we can't lose with the stuff we use. God has power and authority to open the hearts and minds of his people. Praise God. Your, your uh, prayer ought to have been when you came to true life, God opened up my heart and opened up my understanding to receive the word that you have for me today. Amen. Because just because we are saved don't mean that we stop growing. Oh my goodness. See, I got to go out to Sam's Club and find me some weed and feed. You know why? Because other people on my block are getting their lawn sprayed. So that means that when dandelions start to try to overtake their lawn, they can't because they've already been treated. But my lawn hasn't been treated. And my neighbors don't want me to see or to have all these gold-looking dandelions in my yard. So since I, I don't have anybody coming to spray, I got to go out and get me some weed and feed and put it down because I want my lawn to be green. I want it to be lush, plush, and looking good. Amen. Now, if you don't treat it, it'll not only will, will dandelions overtake it, but, but other weeds will overtake your lawn and it'll look all jacked up. I'm trying to tell you something. If you don't allow the Holy Spirit to grow you, stuff will overtake your life. And instead of you manifesting the gifts that God wants you to manifest, you start to look weedy. And none of us want to look like that, do we? Praise God. Jesus has authority to reveal the Father. According to Matthew eleven twenty seven 27 and Luke 10, 22, nobody has seen the Father. Amen. But the Son who has come down from the Father. So if we're going to be revealed the Father, we're going to have to be revealed to by Jesus. Amen. Jesus has authority to give eternal life to whom he chooses. Aren't you glad about that? I'm glad about the whosoever will of the gospel because whosoever will includes me. Hallelujah. And it was not predicated on my intellect because you know some of us would, wouldn't get there if it was predicated on intellect. Y'all ain't saying nothing. See, a lot of people graduated from high school summa cum laude. Some graduated magna cum laude. But the majority of the people graduated thank you, laude. Amen. <laughs> and ain't nothing wrong with thank you, laude, because if the Lord gets you through, you all have, always have the potential to go further. And everybody that's smart don't go to college. But I'm glad that the gospel is not predicated on my intellect because there were folk who are smarter than me. But God said, whosoever will. I'm glad it wasn't predicated on finances. Amen. 
Because if you felt in your pocket trying to find the money that it would have taken to pay for the gospel message, you don't have enough. Amen. If you had all of the wealth in this world, it wouldn't be able to purchase your salvation. The Bible says, what would it profit a man if he should gain this whole world and lose his own soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? Do you know that you have a priceless gift that God extends to you freely? And God came looking for you. You didn't come looking for him. Amen. I'm trying to help somebody. I hear people talking about, I found the Lord. I always want to ask them, where was he hiding? Because the Lord wasn't lost. Amen. You didn't find the Lord. The Lord found you because you were lost. I was lost. And so the Lord had to come looking for us. Amen. And all of us were hiding in different places. Amen. But aren't you glad that he peeped your hiding place? And now you have salvation because he wouldn't leave you where you were. Hallelujah. Jesus has power and authority to raise us up on the last day, according to John 640. I'm glad that even death itself will not be able to deter me from being the father hallelujah when jesus got up from the grave he said all power somebody say all power is given unto me and 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 there is no power on earth that can keep you down not even death itself there are four things that i want to share with you and i'm going to be done i want to talk about jesus's purpose Praise God. I want to talk about Jesus' plan. And I want to talk about Jesus' presence. Hallelujah. And then we need to prioritize what it is that God has left us here to do. Amen? Jesus' purpose is to remind us of his power. After he stated his purpose for the church, it was to make disciples of all the nations. Amen. To make disciples of all the nations. The word disciple means a follower, learner, one who adheres to a leader and teacher. But notice the words all nations. In other words, the Lord is not satisfied but just having you and folk that look like you. Amen. The Lord loves everybody. Amen. The gospel is for everybody. When I get on Facebook, that's the, reason, that's the reason I'm on Facebook, because when I send messages, I send them to Japan, China, Asia, Africa, Europe. America, because the gospel is for everybody. It gives me great consolation to think that one day when I get to heaven that there'll be somebody from China saying, I read your devotionals. And they helped me. Amen? Because it's bigger than, listen, the gospel is bigger than true light. I'm thankful to be your pastor. I'm thankful to have the opportunity to serve here at True Light Christian, but the gospel is bigger than True Light Christian. It's bigger than Canton. It's bigger than Massillon. It's bigger than Ohio. The gospel is for the whole world. Hallelujah. One of the reasons why we're not denominational is because you can't put the gospel in one denomination. And then there ain't going to be no denominations in heaven. I have never read in the Bible where there's going to be Baptists and Catholics and 
Presbyterians and Lutherans in heaven. I tell you what I did read, none but the righteous shall see God. Amen. I, I, denominationalism is a man-made thing. And it's manipulative in a lot of instances. Amen. God didn't tell me I got to jump through your loop to be saved. Y'all ain't going to say that. But I'm glad that, that salvation is free. And, and I'm going to tell you all, I, I will share with you what I used to say. When I was coming up, because I grew up in the Baptist church, I used to say this. I say I was Baptist born, Baptist bred, and when I die, I'll be Baptist dead. And the Lord had to deliver me from myself. And it had nothing to do, ain't nothing wrong with the Baptist faith, ain't nothing wrong. Listen, there's nothing wrong with the polity. It's the people. Amen? People are problems, not necessarily the denomination. Amen. And if you try to go to find a perfect church, don't show up. Amen. Because you ain't perfect. I hear people talking about, you know, I ain't going to that church. They ain't, they, ain't, they ain't right. You ain't right. That's the reason why we come to worship. We all ain't right. We're trying to get right. Amen. Jesus wanted to, us to go out and make disciples of all nations. It's a global task. Amen. The village is the world. And Christ wants us to reach. And it takes the church to reach the whole world. Amen. What are you doing to reach more people than your little concentric circle? Let me say it a different way. How many of you all have ever taken a flat stone and threw it across a, a body of water? You know what happens? It skips, right? But at some point, it goes in. And wherever it goes in, guess what happens? There's a ripple effect. I got some good news for you. When the Lord saves you, and drops you wherever he you are, you are to have a ripple effect so that everybody around you will feel the effects of the love of God. Amen. Or another way to say it is bloom where you planted. Amen. You know, people, we, we, some people, they, they just, they, they're not satisfied with nothing. They don't like where they live don't like what they drive, don't like the job they got. It rain, you don't like that. Some come out, it's too hot. Winter come, it's too cold. You just complain about everything. How about this? How about thank God for the day? For this is the day the Lord has made. We ought to rejoice and be glad in it. Because if you learn how to rejoice more, somebody will come and share in your rejoicing. Amen. Somebody wanted to get a crowd, and so they decided to say fire. Fire! Folks start running. They saw people running. They said, fire, fire! More folks started running. Because, you know, folks love to look, come watch a fire. Have you ever noticed there ain't nobody putting the fire out but the fire people? But everybody else will gather to watch it. Amen? And they say, fire, fire! And pretty soon they had a big crowd. And I learned something about that. And that's why I tell people, if you catch fire, somebody will come watch you burn. Praise God. Let the fire of the Holy Ghost 
have its place in your life. Amen. Jesus has a plan. How do we do what the Lord wants us to do? He gave us three steps. We got to go. Somebody say go. See, we got this thing wrong. We, we, we like the word sit. Amen. Have you ever gone to, I, you know, yesterday I went over to Price Park because I, I, I had in my mind I wanted to exercise. I wanted to walk. But they have benches. around the walking track. And I looked at the benches and I said, you know, it looked pretty comfortable. And I almost went over and sat down. But I, instead I did what I had in my mind to do. I walked. Amen. I walked a mile. And I said, well, since I'm here, I might as well walk too. I walked another mile. Amen. Because I'm, you know, whereas big is a good thing, I need to decrease that the Lord might increase. <laughs> so, so in, in order to get anything accomplished, you've got to get up and go. Amen. Folk want to sick God on things that they ain't going for. Let me, let me tell you how some folk pray. Lord, go by the hospital. On the second floor, 222, and check on so-and-so. And God is up in heaven saying, this is interesting. Because I've already gone. That's what I left you here to do, is to go. Don't seek God on what you're not going for. Let me tell you something else about your prayer life. God will never do what you can do. God specializes in doing what you and I cannot do. But if it's in your power to do it, do it. Amen. You need to bless somebody. You know, if people come to church and, and you know, they, they want to talk about people sometimes, you know, if somebody is... is, is little gamey, you don't know why they are, but you have the wherewithal to bless them. Don't embarrass them. Get off personal with them and, and learn them because it might be something that you can handle. Everything haven't got to come to the church. You are the church. Amen? Do what you can do. And then the things that you can't do, that you take that to God. And say, God, I've done what you've asked me to do. Now I've come to a place that I can't go any further. And I need you to do what nobody else can do. And watch God work. Amen? Praise God. Go. That's an action word. But then he says, baptize. Now, baptism is, is not essential to salvation. Give me real good. The thief on the cross didn't get baptized. Did he? Thief on the cross was dying and he said, when you come into your kingdom, remember me. Jesus said, this day. You will be with me in paradise. Guess what that thief couldn't do? He couldn't get down off that cross and go back and apologize to everybody he had wronged. He couldn't go join XYZ Church. He couldn't 
undo what he had done. But he reached out in faith to the only one that could help him. And Jesus saved him on the cross. Amen? But now if you ain't on no cross, you need to be baptized. Amen? Why do you need to be baptized? Because Jesus was baptized. And if it was good enough for him, and he, he's our way maker, then we ought to do what he showed us to do. Baptism is an outward sign of what has already happened on the inside. Amen? Before you are baptized, you ought to already be a citizen of heaven. Because if, listen, that water that I took Anthony and, and the rest of you all in a few weeks ago, there's nothing salvific about that water. There ain't nothing magical about it. That's just tap water. In other words, if there wasn't a change on the inside, you just came up a wet sinner. Praise God. And then some folk have a misconception of baptism. You know, I, I used to have in my pocket, there was a cartoon thing that uh, the preacher told this one guy, he said, now, I'm going to take you down in this water, and everything that, that go down in that water belongs to God. And so before he could get him down in the water, he took his wallet up and held it above the water. Because <laughs> for the love of money, y'all ain't saying nothing. But when the Lord saved you, he has all of you or none of you. Hello, somebody. Giving is essential to the gospel message. For God so loved the world that he gave. If you are godly, you are a giver. Praise God. And then if you know what I know, offerings are not for God. Offerings are for you. You say, well, how is that? Well, you plant whatever you want to come up. Amen? What would I look like going out in my lawn, planting hay, and I want grass to come up? I plant grass seeds because what? That's what I want to come up. Why do you give? Because if you plant financial seed, God will water it and make it more than what you put in. Every time I give, I say, Lord, here's a seed. I'm seed faith. I'm just planting because I know that you're going to multiply it. And little becomes much when you place it in the master's hand. Amen? So not only should we go, but we ought to baptize. But then it says we ought to teach. Some folk think they done graduated from teaching. I don't need Sunday school. Why don't you need Sunday school? You know the same stories. I know them stories. You don't know nothing. You, you think you know. You don't even know for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Explain. You know what you can't explain? The love of God. Why does God love you? I don't even know why he loves me. I don't, if I'm looking at myself, I say, you know, he, that's, he, <laughs> unlovable. Amen. But God looked beyond my faults and saw every one of my needs. He did the same thing for you. Amen. You got to teach for. Amen. Preaching excites people. Teaching holds people. That's the reason why people who grew up in somebody's congregation, some, some, a lot of them now got rags around the head reading palms. Because preaching excites people. You know, people used to go, they say, you know, we had a good time. Yeah, what'd you, what, what'd you, what did the preacher preach? I don't know. But we had a good time. Amen. 
Deborah and I were watching on Facebook yesterday, I think it was before our internet went out. Spectrum better get there fast. Anyway, how many of y'all remember the choirs back in the day? Y'all remember the choirs back in the day? We saw a choir that was making their entrance into the church house. It took them a good 35 minutes. Now, folk will complain about the message being long. If I see y'all looking down at your watch, don't be trying to rush me. The choir came in. One group went in. I thought it was done, Kim. Then another group came in behind them. Then a young little group come in. I, it took, I bet you it took 35 minutes. They had, did they sing a song, Deborah? They didn't even sing a song. March, they marched all the way up to the front of the church and sat down. And I said, this is interesting. And some folk had the nerve to put their little finger up in there and exit. Somebody tell me what this means. Y'all remember this, this is the exit sign number, isn't it? That's how folk used to leave worship. Put that thing up. I still don't know what it means. Where they got, who started that? My point is you need to teach, you need to teach for. Amen. And here's the other thing. You, you need to see when you're taught, you understand you don't walk during certain times of worship. Amen. You need to go to the restroom, go before you come in here. Amen. Because you might miss something you need to hear. And distract somebody else. Amen. Teaching. And then sometimes you can see. The reason why you all come to worship is because there's some things in that word that you need cultivate. You need dug up so that you can understand what you're reading. Let me give you just one case in point. You read the word love in the Bible and you think you know what love is. Love can mean several different things. It's spelled the same way, but it may be a different word in the original language. So you can read it and think you know what it says and you don't know what it says. Amen? Like if you had been in Sunday school this morning, you would know that when Jesus said, Peter, do you love me? Peter, Jesus said, Peter, do you agape me? And Peter said, Lord, I phileo you. Now, in the English, it's the same word, L-O-V-E. But they were talking on two different levels. Because when you talk to the Lord, it would be a misconception for you to think that you could reach his level by your means. See, God got to love you and love through you so that you can love him back. Because you and I don't even have the possibility to love God in and of our own strength. I need to come down somebody's street. You used to go around to my, you tell everybody you love them. When your hormones was acting up, you told folk you loved them. You didn't love them. You were infatuated. Hello, somebody. You wanted to get, get over. So you said, I love you. And then when, when the deal was done, you don't even know their name. What was that? 
wasn't love. Y'all got quiet. Folk looking. They're doing the Calvin on me. Listen. God had to love you and put his love in you so that you could give it back to him. You want some more of that, you need to come to Bible class. It says, go, baptize, teach. Literally, this passage says, as you are going, make disciples by baptizing and teaching. The main purpose is to make disciples, but the process is by going, baptizing, and teaching. So we're to go, win, and instruct. Amen. Joe, if you ask people in, in most congregations about the word grace, you would get probably as many answers as there are people in the place. Words that we use commonly, folk don't even know. It's what I learned when I was teaching at Malone and Walsh, Every time I would get a new class, they were more ignorant than the class before. And they were coming from so-called Christian homes. We have gotten to the point where folk don't even know what a Bible looks like. And don't know the God of the Bible. Amen. The stories that you talked about when you were little, there are a lot of people who don't even know what they where to find them or what they were about. You can't just take for granted that people know what you're talking about anymore. Amen. We've got to keep learning. We've got to keep teaching. And we've got to keep reaching. Are you all still with me? Then Jesus' presence. Jesus ends the Great Commission by assuring us of his presence. Oh my goodness. You know what keeps me preaching and teaching and living is God's presence. If it wasn't for God's presence, I'd have quit this a long time ago. Amen? Because church folk is some of the most ruthless folk in the world. I don't mean y'all. Man, church folk, man. Church folk will kill you. Y'all do know that, don't you? Oh, you want me to prove that, don't you? Well, I'm a teacher, because now I can prove what I tell you. Y'all don't remember Paul? The Apostle Paul? You know what Paul was doing before the Lord saved him? He was persecuting the church. He was going around finding people who followed Jesus and he was bringing them in chains back to Jerusalem. He might have been responsible for some killings of good Christians. I'm talking about the Paul that wrote more of the books of the New Testament. Folk will kill you thinking they're doing God a favor. So don't, don't, don't ever come to worship without your clothes on. Amen. Because if you come without your clothes on, you'll see somebody, they'll be looking at you, and you'll be thinking they're looking at you because you done done something. I ain't going back to that church. Why? They looked at me funny. Folk will stay out of church for a whole bunch of reasons. Amen. Because they don't have their armor on. And first of all, when you come to worship, you shouldn't worry about what folk looking at you about anyway. Your focus ought to be on the Lord. Amen. Not people. Matter of fact, if you were if you were really focused in on heaven, you wouldn't even know who was around you. 
You lift up your hands. You ain't worried about who see your hands go up. Their hands ought to be up. Amen. Worship is plugging in to heaven and allowing the frequency of the Holy Ghost to run through you so that somebody else will get the overflow of what you and God are doing. Amen. The Lord said, I'm going to be with you. When I send you out, you're not going to be by yourself. I will be there with you. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, you're not alone. God is with you. When you think you're alone, you're not. When you think you're by yourself, you're not. If you're a child of God, God is right there with you. I'm going to give you some more good news. The Lord beats you to the spot where you go. He goes before you to pave the way for your presence. God goes before you because anybody that does anything to you have got to touch him before they touch you. And if our person touch you, they got to deal with God. And your arms are too short to box with God. Amen. The Lord said, lo, I am with you. And the Lord with you and for you is greater than the whole world against you. I had to, to speak on the 50th anniversary of Dr. King's assassination. And one of the things that I heard him say, we've got some difficult days ahead. It really doesn't matter to me now. So I've been to the mountaintop. And God has allowed me to go to the mountaintop. And I've looked over, seen the promise land. He said, I might not get there with you. But I want you to know tonight that we as a people went to the promise. He said, so tonight I'm not worried about anything. I'm not seeing any man. Mine eyes have seen the glory. The coming of the Lord. You see, when you know God's presence is with you, you're not worried about things, people. Amen. I believe, this is my belief, that on that next day, when evil and wickedness took Dr. King out, I believe God dispatched angels to catch him before he fell on that balcony to usher him in to his eternal home. Because greater is he that is in us than he that is in world. All they did was give, was do him a favor. To be absent in body, y'all ain't saying nothing. Is to be present with the Lord. Amen. You look at yourself. Look in the mirror. Every day you live, you're getting closer to your destination. Amen. I used to, y'all, I used to have a fro as big as Dr. J's, black. And I used to blow it out. And when the wind would blow, that bad booger would lean to the side. And then when it stopped blowing, it would stand straight back up. Some of y'all have seen my the picture. My hair don't look like that no more. Amen. I've gotten whiter. I don't have no problem with white. Amen. 
because everybody don't get to get where I am. Amen. God will bless you if you hang out with him. Amen. And God will do for you what the world can't do for you. God will give you peace that passes all understanding. You don't have to worry about anything because God will supply all your need according to his riches and glory. All God wants you to do is go baptize, teach. Amen. You say, well, I'm not a teacher. Yes, you are. Because somebody's watching you. You don't even have to open your mouth. You're teaching somebody. Because how you act is teaching somebody something. Parents, be careful. Your kids are watching you. They don't, they don't listen to what you say. They watch what you do. And when you're not around, they try to walk like you. They try to talk like you. They dress like you. Why? Because you're teaching them something. What are you teaching? Everybody in here is a teacher. What are you teaching? God wants you to share the gospel with somebody else so that somebody else will know that there's a reality in serving the true and living God. Amen? That's the message today. Go. Now, you got a whole week. Next week is Family and Friends Day. Go. And tell somebody. Bring them with you. Amen. Don't be coming up in this driving uh, this parking lot, one on a mule. Car lot full of cars. You come up in here, it's three, four. Because you bypass somebody to get over here. Bring somebody with you. Amen? So you can share the good news that Jesus lived. And he's the best thing that's ever happened in our life. Stand to your feet. Praise God. I'm glad that somebody came and told me about Jesus. And one of the first people to tell me about Jesus was my mother. I'm glad she did that because she gave me the greatest gift that I've ever received. Because when Jesus came into my life, he changed my life. And he's making something beautiful out of my life. He'll do the same thing for you. But you've got to surrender to him. Amen. And God wants you to go. You say, well, I don't know a whole bunch. What do you know? Do you know that the Lord loves you? Share that. Amen. Do you know once you were lost and now you're found? Share that. You know something. Share what you know. You can't tell what you don't know and you can't leave where you don't go. Share what you got and bring somebody to the Lord. Amen. Father, thank you for your great commission. Thank you for your instructions for us to go teach, baptize all nations, letting everybody know that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And God, we are thankful that you don't leave us alone but that you never present help in the time of trouble. So God, right now, touch somebody's life, somebody who may be looking for an answer to all of life's problems. You are the answer. So God, open up somebody's heart, somebody's mind, so that they can be receptive to your gospel message. We thank you and praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. 
Amen. The door of the church is open. You can come. Candidate for baptism by letter. Maybe you need a church home. This is a good place to be. Amen. Maybe you need to go.